All right, and uh, we're back with another installment of uh, our video series, Philosophy 15. Uh, I am Robert Talese. I'm Scott Aiken. Uh, we together are the authors of this here book, uh, Why We Argue and How We Should, A Guide to Political Disagreement. Um, so one of the things that we've noticed uh, about this series, which I will reiterate, is unscripted philosophical conversation between two guys who share uh, a, 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 a vestibule between our faculty offices. <laughs> uh, one of the things we've noticed so far is that um, the series thus far has been devoted um, exclusively to some pretty dispiriting uh, concerns about democracy, the possibility of democracy, um, the uh, possibility of um, uh, deliberative democracy, and the problems of public argument. And we've landed ourselves time and time again, uh, again, uh, perhaps inadvertently almost, uh, with some pretty uh, skeptical uh, conclusions about such matters. So what we thought we would do <laughs> just to mix things up a little bit, is to um, devote uh, uh, this uh, episode to um, a question that, uh, at least on its face, doesn't look like it's bound to land us in some pretty depressing thoughts about democratic politics. Um, we're wondering today, for the next uh, uh, 12 minutes and 20 seconds, um, about the so-called unity of the virtues thesis. There are some people who think that um, the primary um, currency within which moral theory is conducted are items or dispositions or tendencies called virtues and vices. Um, these are virtue theorists. These are people who think that uh, moral philosophy is primarily conducted um, by means of an analysis of uh, admirable and non-admirable character traits, something like that. Um, and among those theorists, the virtue theorists, some hold a view that um, I think can be found in Aristotle, although maybe some people so, deny that he's committed to it, but it looks like it's there in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. The thesis that is sometimes called the unity of the virtues thesis. Um, so what is that thesis? That's a good That's place, a to place to start. So, you know, <laughs> as we started, Scott and I started talking a little bit about uh, the unity of the virtues thesis, we discovered that um, it's not clear to us even what the thesis is. Right. So it looks like it comes in at least a variety of strengths. Uh, yeah. One uh, gets stated, whether or not it's Plato's view too, is another question. But it gets stated in uh, the Protagoras, where it looks like all the virtues honesty, bravery, justice, all of those things that look like they're admirable character traits are actually products of, or you might say, facets of one character trait. So the unity of the virtues is, you might say, the what makes them unified is that there's actually one virtue. <laughs> Plato doesn't name it, uh, but maybe there's one virtue that all of these other admirable character traits are manifestations of. And so the only way that so you get all the virtues come as one big go that might seem, seem to be the sort of the basic thought behind the, the the unity of the virtues thesis which is that all the virtues seem to become as a package that's the thought and that then that what explains that and so the platonic one platonic view or you might say the platonic protagorean view is that it's all manifestations of just one character trait, and you get all the character traits. Those are just manifestations of that one deep virtue. So that's the strongest version. Right, which seems to be a, a, a view. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to try to figure out what the thesis is. What, what maybe, exactly is that yeah. thesis? <laughs> that looks like the unity of the virtues thesis in that strong platonic sense, then, is the thesis about what we might sort of say, the conceptual issues about right. identify what, what, what do all the things that we call admirable by way of character traits have in common? That's got to be a single and, sort of one over right. many kind of thing. Right. And it's right. And it's an explanatory story. That's right. Too. Right. 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 It, right. It, so it's, yeah, it's not just the semantics of it or like what, right. It's going to be the thing that makes them virtues. Good. Right. Yeah. Now contrast that though with the second, um, thought that may also be characterized as the unity of the virtue thesis, which might be more obviously just a, a, a purely Aristotelian doctrine, where the unity of the virtues thesis is actually a thesis about virtue cultivation, right? Where it says, 
the, the unity of virtues is the is the thesis that says in order to manifest any particular single virtue let's say courage one also must manifest to some degree or other and this is where things are going to get pretty thorny pretty quickly all of the other virtuous traits that there could not be in some sense there could not be a cowardly honest man right there could not be a courageous blowhard right um that if you're benevolent you must also be just right now one way to sort of draw out different strengths within that view is maybe it's like one can't be fully or perfectly or completely courageous unless one manifests all the other virtues to that same degree. Right. That's the strongest version. Maybe there's a slightly weaker version that says the perfection of any particular virtue must be accompanied by maybe not the perfection of every other, but a sufficiently robust cultivation of every other. Right. Now, notice, by the way, that this weaker version requires this degreed notion right. of virtues that, on the one hand, looks like it's much more plausible uh, that we'd th say something like, look, you know, in the same way in which you acquire, in, in which you might say the Aristotelian would say you acquire the virtues is that you get better at the practice, right? You get more consistent. Right. That you would say, well, it's the more consistent practice of all these other virtues that makes the other ones, the other ones intelligible. So, Regardless of what the thesis is, it looks like we've kind of got like a kind of a range there. Um, let's kind of ask whether or not it looks like it's a plausible thesis to begin with. And then we're going to ask another sort of strange question about it. So is it really plausible that, so like we list a handful of Aristotle's, vir uh, the Aristotelian style virtues, but like, for example, like Aristotle lists wit as one of the virtues. Can you, can you have someone who's a bore, but vir virtuous, but virtuous in the sense in which that person is courageous? It seems like a, someone who's not witty can, could be courageous. Uh, otherwise, Ajax uh, from the, uh, from the, from, the, from Homer's Iliad wouldn't count as courageous. Uh, sounds, it sounds a little implausible. However, uh, again, if we take the degreed notion, we would say something along these lines. I think that if I were to defend the degreed notion, I'd defend it along these lines. I'd say, look, uh, we're talking about the perfection of this, and look, if he's a little bit dull, then he hasn't. Then there's a sense in which he maybe he's not quite judging the situation as dangerous as maybe it is, or maybe isn't taking account of the capacities that he has to be able to weather the situation. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yes, that would be one way <laughs> in which th it, the unity of the virtues thesis would be um, defended. Um, but notice, uh, it does suggest that um, every virtue attribution has to be qualified unless one is willing to attribute all of the all virtues. Of yeah. yeah. So that. That still doesn't seem to me plausible. It seems right. to me that you can have a stingy, uh, a stingy, courageous person. Yeah. It seems to. It seems again. It looks like some um, uh, some some ad hocery might have to go into the story in order to sort of override very strong intuitions that at least I've got. It's well. Just, so maybe, so maybe we'll go, maybe instead of looking at the cases, maybe we need to kind of go up. And so think, again, we're going to use Aristotle, Aristotle's notion as a guide where we'd say, look, uh, whenever we think about the things that contribute to the good life, on the hypothesis that the virtues are, you might say, constitutive elements of the good life, the good life is supposed to be something that's unqualifiedly good. Uh, the virtues, too, are supposed to be something, things that are unqualifiedly good. So uh, we take, for example, all the, these cases where someone is uh, still stingy, uh, but witty or something like that, right? Uh, it, maybe the thought would be something like this. Uh, the stingy person's wit, right? The stingy person's wit isn't unqualifiedly good. Why? Because the stingy person's wit is often put in terms of the fact that the, someone is uh, saying get a job in the, maybe the sort of the, the exactly the right kind of witty way to, to, to someone in need. Um, that's a case where it would be this is a, something that if it's a virtue, it's something that, that if, if it's a virtue, virtue full, full stop, 
it's going to be something that's unqualifiedly good. We can still have it on the dial, right? We can, still, but uh, insofar it's going to be a virtue, it's going to be a virtue. It's going to be something unqualifiedly good, which then requires the unity of the virtues. What do you think about that? Uh, so, uh, again, I, a yawn. I, oh my goodness. I, I'm not sure. So, um, I think that there are some people whose wit owes to their stinginess. Um, yeah. So uh, again, not sure. Um, I also think there's a conceptual question that um, uh, is being sort of um, presupposed, or the answer to a, a conceptual question is being presupposed by the self-sufficiency or the unqualifiedly right. good conception of this, which is that um, conceptually speaking, it's possible for all of the virtues to be manifest in a single life. That... Um, I think it's a question, one that I don't think um, Aristotle attended uh, seriously enough to, although some people seem to, to think that Aristotle would have been comfortable with the thought I'm about to articulate. It looks as if it's possible that um, some, uh, uh, some version of what we'll call the value pluralist thesis, the value pluralist thesis is the thesis that says there are objective goods that are in whose possibility um, depends upon the, the 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 possibility of you having the character trait that is objectively good. Uh, it, it depends upon the absence of some other good character trait, right? So you might think that courageous people, right, might have to be um, uh, in some other aspect of the kind of foolhardy. Right. Yeah. Or maybe sacrifice some other virtue. Right? Yeah. That maybe the courageous person has to sacrifice something like humility. Or mm -hmm. is, right. Uh, so um, you might even think humility yeah. is a good one because you might even yeah. think that this is a, right. that somebody who's not humble, a very Greek virtue. <laughs> right. Well, good. If it is a virtue, it looks as if humility is conceptually tied to an epistemic vice. Right. You're humble insofar as you underestimate your worth or ability. Is that what humility is? Does humility require that you think that you're less good than what you are? Um, or is it that humility is something that where you estimate yourself, where you'd say, look, um, if, if, if you were infallible, like if you were a fallible creature, like we all are, you, you might say it's more a sort of a, a, a tendency to, to attend to the places where you're fallible. And be honest about them. So you might say humility is a sort of a convergence of self-knowledge and a kind of an honest, an overt honesty about that. Well, what about modesty? Yeah. So modesty might be, right. so I think that yeah. you're right that there are some cases of humility where it isn't properly yeah. attending yeah. to your weaknesses. But humility is also, I think, connected to yeah. an underestimation of your, of Mo your, yeah. Modesty is more an act, isn't it? Yeah, modesty right. looks, uh, <laughs> right, uh, because we have the, we have the notion of false modesty where it looks like we, we put on certain kinds of gestures. Yeah, but there's false humility. I mean, so, yeah. so, you know, <laughs> so one wonders if all the virtues can indeed, it's just a conceptual matter, sort of live together in a, in a single character. Um, and maybe they can't. Um, now, the deeper question, I think, is whether the unity of the virtues thesis, were it true, uh, whether that thesis would lead us to think that the vices are also unified. Philosophy 15, folks. <laughs> That means we're done. <laughs>